What people have to understand is that AI is not going to replace them. What's going to replace them is somebody who is implementing AI. That's the separation between success and failure when it comes to moving forward. Charles, thank you for joining me on our Thought Leader Spotlight Series. I'm your host over here, Matt Camp with Deal Machine, Head of Partnerships. And on these, we really like to shine a spotlight on industry experts like yourself, really hear your inspiring stories and just educate our audience on how you see the real estate world evolving. So uh, today, really excited to welcome on Charles Blair. Uh, Charles, you, you might know him as the mad scientist on social media, uh, puts out great stuff on YouTube and all over the place. Um, he's a full-time transaction engineer with over 30 plus years of experience doing real estate investing and is truly a top expert in using technology in the real estate process. So uh, Charles, excited to have you on today, man. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it, man. I've been using Deal Machine for years. As a matter of fact, about four or five years ago, if I'm not mistaken, one of my highest rating videos on my channel was talking about Deal Machine and driving for dollars. Awesome. I, I love to hear that about Deal Machine. Uh, you know, appreciate the, the little bit of uh, praise there too, man. But I know, uh, you know, one, one thing I wanted to dig in on, um, you know, your YouTube channel put out fantastic stuff. Uh, you also have a super inspiring personal story, how you got into real estate. Like, can you tell me more and our audience about like how you went from that? And you mentioned you, uh, I believe you said you dropped out of high school mm -hmm. and then, you know, now you've done real estate for what, 30 plus years, like yeah. incredible journey. Yeah, actually, my journey began in the projects of East Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I was one of those guys living in the projects uh, where there's a situation where drugs is rampant, all this other mm -hmm. stuff is going on around you, and the only way to get out is either by way of success or going to jail. And in my environment, I was that guy that hated school. I, I hated school with a passion. How some people love to do different things, for me, it wasn't school. So I dropped out in junior high school. And when I dropped out of junior high school, my mother, first thing she said was, you got to get a job. You can't just sit around here and do nothing. So my first job was security guard, working at John Hockham's Hospital on the midnight shift. I got fired from that job, falling asleep. Second job, working at Baltimore Gas and Electric, security guard, midnight shift. I got fired on that job, falling asleep. My third job, was working as a security guard. You, you see the pattern going on here mm -hmm. on the midnight shift. And I got fired from that job. But while I was working on the midnight shift, I used to watch Carlton Sheets. He was on television talking about how you could buy real estate with no money, no credit, and no experience. Mm -hmm. So I basically had all the boxes checked. So at that point in time, I said, I got to figure out something. I mean, when you have a ninth grade education, your your actual ability to do things is limited. So I picked up that course. And like a lot of people, when you buy courses, I didn't open it. It just sat there in the closet without being open. And by the third time in which I actually purchased the course, I began to read it and begin to learn. And man, it just really opened my eyes on real estate mm -hmm. investing. Though I have that ninth grade education, Colton Sheets was able to touch me with his knowledge and with what you can do with real estate that allowed me to reach out and seek a mentor. And I found a mentor. Um, my salary at that time was uh, $50 a week in lunch. And I call that my highest paying job because I worked with that mentor for eight months. And after eight months, I became a full time investor. I've been a full time investor now for over 30 plus years. At one point in time, I was the largest minority owner of apartment buildings in downtown Baltimore called Mount Vernon Properties. So for me, it's not the education or what you would call the typical education process. For me, it was real estate and deciding that this is going to be the way that I need to change my life. And that's my story. Wow. That's incredible, man. Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, both your, your perseverance through that whole thing. I mean, Carlton Sheets, that's for sure one that we've heard uh, quite a few times from people on here of, you know, one of the original inspirations for getting into this, this line of work. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's incredible to see how you did that. And then what, what developed your interest in technology? Cause I mean, you, I, a lot of your content, like yeah. I see it's, you know, focused on AI and all of that. Like, I'd love to hear how you yeah. kind of evolved into that world. Sure. Early on in our real estate and business, marketing was the key to us doing deals. I mean, mm -hmm. at the height of us doing deals, we're doing over a hundred deals a year. 
And the key behind that was the systems that we had in place. We were doing sales pages, squeeze pages, uh, follow up mm -hmm. campaigns before it was the norm. So my love for marketing really came from that in the real estate business, and it has evolved ever since then. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I yeah, I, I think now like AI is such a powerful tool if, if used correctly on that. I mean, can can you maybe start there for our audience on, you know, um, really, I guess, just dig into how to use AI in, in wholesaling, um, you know, and really define it to begin with, too. There's so many different ways in which you could implement AI strategies in your business. I'll give you examples based on some of the things we're doing. For example, uh, we use AI when it comes to our actual postcards that we send out. When we send mm -hmm. out a postcard, it'll have a QR code on it. And when that homeowner scans that QR code, it says something like, want to offer in seven want to want to close on your property in seven days or less? Scan here. And when that homeowner scans on that QR code, they get an AI automated spokesperson from our company that's asking them questions about their deal. They're asking them questions about their property. So that's one way that we're doing it. What people have to understand is that AI is not going to replace them. What's going to replace them is somebody who is implementing AI. That's the separation between success and failure when it comes to moving forward. So you have to look at what's in your business and how can I utilize AI to actually save time in my process, save times in my systems, save times in my automation. And that's where you start at. What's costing you the most time and what's out there that's practical that you can use to actually get back that time and concentrate on what we need to concentrate on most. And that's closing deals. Yeah, hundred percent. I I love that mindset on how you're embracing AI because I I hundred like over here we very much agree that it can be a tool for productivity. It can be a tool to ten x what you can do. Like we've got even over here our engineers like our our main our CTO he uses AI as a tool that he can do the work of what ten people now and and do it himself. But it's because he's embracing it as a tool to really give him a superpower. And that's where we think you can separate yourself from from the pack too. Is if you're in it, if you're educating yourself on how to use this stuff rather than seeing it as just purely a threat that could take over or really dismissing it as a fad that isn't tangible and measurable in terms of what it can do. Like I, even inside deal machine, we've got an AI assistant Alma uh, and that, you know, that that's mm -hmm. towards the end goal, you know, it's kind of version one, but it's towards the end goal of giving all of our customers that AI superpower. So yeah, another one of the ways in which we're using AI is that it is responsible for training and onboarding our new VAs, our new hirees. So what we've done is integrated chat GPT and the GPT function, and we upload our knowledge base of our standard operating procedure. And we created it as a chatbot. So now when we want to train or onboard one of our employees, we have them get that actual chatbot and just start asking questions about the processes and the systems that we have in place. And it's being used to train our actual team members. I love that. Yeah, we're actually using it. So even uh, we made a custom GPT internally as well um, for our podcast. And because we have a lot of people who ask about like a certain episode of the podcast or like, hey, teach me about, you know, how to mm -hmm. what to say to sellers or whatever, whatever the subject might be. And now you can go yes. into that custom GPT and say like, hey, where does David talk about, you know, talking to sellers in the podcast? And it'll come up and it'll say, hey, here's this episode about it, this episode about it. And it'll really help us dig through and use that data set to, to help people more effectively. Um, that's just one of, you know, many ways we're going to just keep getting better at what we do using the power of AI is to, to assist us. Right. So love it. Um, you know, I, I was curious. I agree. 100%. Yeah. I, I was curious. Uh, you know, I know before this, you've talked about how, uh, you know, lead nurturing and just the follow-up process is where the money is. Mm -hmm. You know, you've done so many deals. You, you can truly really speak to that. Can you maybe talk about uh, yes. the ideal follow-up process, that playbook, how to use AI within, you, you gave one example, but just any advice, especially for the newbie on like how to think about the follow-up process? Absolutely. Now I'll give you an example of one of the ways in which we're doing nurturing and using AI at the same time. Um, we have one of our mini lists that we pull is code enforcement violation. Mm -hmm. And with that code enforcement violation, it can be a challenge because some properties will have four, five, six, seven, or eight violations. Some will have one or two. Some is 10 is in this zip code, 20 is in that zip code. So the way we're actually bringing the two together, the actual 
data analysis and the nurturing is we're uploading our data sets inside of ChatGPT and we're actually analyzing that data set and say, break down based on our code enforcement list, break down which properties have the most violations and the highest zip codes and the highest probability of actually being a deal to close on the quickest based on these parameters. And then what it gives us is the ability to download that information into a spreadsheet and now out- upload it into our direct mail campaign system, our actual uh, email system, and our, once we skip trace it, text messaging system. So now we're doing a three, six, nine, 12 month follow up nurturing campaign based on that data set. And the best part of all, We've even used AI to create the messages that we send out. We huh. even use AI to actually create the images for the postcard. We actually use AI to create the text messages that we send out and so on. Love that, man. Yeah, I mean, that's an area with Alma on our end. I mean, the AI assistant that we're, we've built out on our, on our side, it's all about similar things where we're, we're feeding in our off-market property data. We're feeding it data that it can't get other other ways. Um, we're prompting it. Like you said, we're prompting it with a variety of things to make it very specialized and focused on real estate investing. And then you can go in and mm-hmm. analyze deals and say, hey, what's the max allowable offer you give on this property? And hey, is this going to be a good wholesale deal? Because I, you know, based on the loan that we're that, that individual is dealing with, ba- or you know, mortgage amount, um, you know, uh, uh, equity percentage, like based on that, and then based on the max allowable offer, like could this be a good deal? It really helps you do this quick back of the napkin math to be more productive in the field to understand what a deal looks like and what it doesn't. So, And as you mentioned, in regards to the nurturing side of it, you Mm -hmm. already know, Matt, that if you want to be in the mindset of that seller, you got to hit them 7, 12, 15 times. And if you're not doing that, it's going to be a situation where they're not going to know who you are. They're going to forget why you want to speak with them and they're not going to want to do business with you. Mm-hmm. So when you're doing that, the key that you have to understand is mark message to market match. So your data, your information has to match the mindset of that person that you want to deal with so that you can have that higher conversion from that nurturing. So instead of just trying to reach out and hit that person through a text or trying to reach out and hit that person through an email or through a cold call, or through whatever, people understand and learn in different ways. So you got to hit them with different modalities. Some people may respond with text. Some people may respond with phone call. Older people may respond with letters or by way of other avenues in which you want to marketing channels in which you want to bring into the process. So it's all about the message to market match and hitting that actual seller with the right modality. That's so true. Yeah, like AI gives you the ability to make some make some customizations that were never scalable. Now, now it is scalable. Now you can, you know, understand what what marketing channels are going to be best optimized to this person, and what marketing message is going to be most customized to this person. Like um, all those things, when you do yes. all the little things right, and they add up to higher conversion rates and more deals. So, um, yeah, I, I I love the way you think about it, man. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Awesome. That's the reason why they call me the mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I say I get it now. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt, as you can tell, I love this stuff. I yeah. mean, this isn't work. When you love something, you 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 outwork everybody mm-hmm. because it's not work to you. It's part of a passion that you feel about a certain topic or a certain thing or a certain environment that you want to be in. Yeah. And you're, and you're great at sharing it with others, like sharing that passion and teaching them how to use it too. So um great great stuff i you know one thing i I was also curious about i mean i love uh hearing about your story how you've overcome that you know the ai angle and tech um one thing that's i've been super impressed with as well is the meetup group that you started and that's in like the dc maryland virginia area um i know you mentioned it has over ten thousand members at this point right yeah Mm -hmm. can you tell us more on um you know yeah actually we have close to eleven thousand members wow okay yeah. No, I was going to mention, could you tell us more about like why you started that, how you started it? Do you recommend others start a group of their own? Like, tell us more about that. Sure. The, the, the reason why this group was started was because a good friend of mine who's, who's no longer here with us today, uh, Kenneth Gills and I, was in our community. And one of the things we noticed about, and I want to say the East Coast, but I know about the community that we're in, which is the DMV, Maryland, D.C., Virginia. 
-hmm. People don't like to share their knowledge. It's like Mm -hmm. a scarcity mentality where they want to just keep it to themselves. And they think that if you share it, somebody else out there is going to take all the deals. Mm -hmm. So it came from wanting to break that chain of a scarcity mentality and just give back to our community. And that's how the real deal meetup came to be. And basing it on that, we don't do any selling. We don't do any type of speakers like RIAs and all that stuff. Every month we do a meeting where it's 100% content, no fluff, no BS, just real deal information. And because of that mindset and because of that recognition of what people get when they come to that meetup, that has allowed us to grow to be the third largest meetup in the nation when it comes to meetup and real estate investing. It's that mindset of not having a scarcity sense of being when it comes to sharing your information. Wow. Do, do you think, so, you know, we have a fair number of newbies watching this or people that have maybe they've done a couple deals and they're trying to figure out how to scale, how to get to that next level. Um, for those folks, do you recommend them, you know, to simply start attending those meetings or do you recommend like do, is starting one a, a good idea? Like what, what do you, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on this because I think it'd be unique. Yeah. Uh, For us, and I think for any person who has that knowledge, I definitely think that it could be a great way to, one, share your knowledge. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, another great way to get deals and to get leads. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think it's a great opportunity. Unfortunately, the opportunities that are out there right now. When you start this type of thing, if you're doing it live, because ours is live, it's not it's mm-hmm. not uh, online. It's actually live in person at a hotel. It can be costly. So mm-hmm. we eat the cost of paying for the hotel. We eat the cost of paying for food and stuff. But the return mm-hmm. is just immeasurable because we're giving. And you know the, the whole theory of reciprocity. Mm-hmm. If you give, pay it forward, people will bring it back to you. And that's the way we grew this meetup. And that's the way or the reason behind us getting a lot of deals from the meetup and making a lot of connections and stuff. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, I, for sure. It's, it's a, you know, a little bit of an upfront investment and, and, you know, ongoing investment sounds like, but, but yeah, I'm a big believer of just, Hey, get the more value you can give, the more you can bring people together. Good things happen. Even if you don't know necessarily exactly what's going to come out of it, like exactly they, serendipitous things happen like that. So, um, Awesome, man. Well, this this has been fantastic, Charles. I really appreciate I you giving people a little bit of an insight into, especially the AI angle. Like, again, Alma is kind of our attempt at that, our first version that people have been really loving, and we're going to continue to evolve that. But, um, you know, I appreciate you jumping on, sharing that with us. Like, how can people yeah. uh, in our community get more involved with you, get in touch with you? I'd love to, uh, to, to get them, uh, you know, in, in your world as well. Absolutely. Just reach out to us. You can reach out on our website, realdealmeetup.com or my real estate investing company, which is Chucky by Lucky Houses uh, dot com. And you can reach us through that. We're all over social media underneath of Real Mad Scientist. And uh, there's a lot. This has been fantastic, man. Great stuff. Really appreciate you spending time with us um, you know, today and throughout all this and, and really in general. Uh, appreciate you being an advocate for us too. So uh, thanks again. It's my pleasure because I'm looking, I'm looking to continue to be an advocate for you guys because you got a great product. It's been around for years. It has a trusted track record. We've used it. So it's definitely something that the real estate community need and can get great value out of. Thank you so much. It means a lot. So uh, appreciate it, Charles. Uh, Glad to have you back on. Uh, To everyone else watching, this is Matt Camp with Deal Machine and happy deal finding.